error in judgment and be publicly shamed and lose, you know, the group of people that you're working with. You can be fired. You can be let go. You can be, you know, you could be charged for something you didn't do. You could have your name pulled under. Your, rep your reputation destroyed. Now nobody wants to work with you. And it, it doesn't even have to be like one thing. Like I almost believe that, like let's say you had, let's go back to the example of having a business, a thriving business and $100,000 put away for whatever reason, which I wouldn't do because I would always be spending the money that I have. But anyway, let's say that that happened, right? Let's say all in one day, in one foul swoop, you lose your business and you lose the $100,000 that you've saved, okay? That would be a pretty devastating blow. But the nature of devastating blows is that, you know, they're so s strong, at least, in, you know, this is how some people can re react, I imagine. I imagine that I would react in this way. It's so powerful and instant that, uh, you know, it really makes you... You know, you see stars, and you, um, it really makes you in that moment uh, re examine everything in your life. And in that way, it can actually be a, be, be a profound, you know, boost for you. And you could change course and, and, and learn some dramatic lessons. Now, conceivably, that should be the case for every obstacle that comes in your path, right? But, um, that's, I'm just saying that, you know, let's say something really big happens that, that can be helpful, but, but let's say it, you know, it doesn't happen in one foul swoop. That's, that's really what would concern someone like myself. So let's say I slowly lose my business and then I lose the other business that I had, you know, a few years later, that was my backup. And... I'm now down to $50,000 from $100,000. And then a few years later, I'm down to $20,000. And now I have nothing. And all this happens over the course of a few years. So that is the slow grinding, which you might say is worse. I would say that's, that's worse in some ways. I'd, I'd rather it, it all just disappear in one foul swoop. But all these things could happen, and all these things are obstacles that we might face. And, uh, like I said, some things might seem pretty, you know, losing a friend. That's pretty emotional. Um, let's say, you know, your romantic partner leaves you. That's pretty emotional. That's a big deal for you to go through but on this you know it might not be as obviously difficult to everyone as being maimed or being killed oh my gosh did you hear about Theo he died in that fire I can't believe it he he had so much to live for the poor thing you know he had a thriving business and he here he he's in he ends up dead in a in a fire my gosh, you know, some people think that there's no return from that, but as it happens, life goes on. <sighs> but yeah, you know, death, a, a, a loved one leaving you, a loved one dying, someone you cherish dying, um, a friend leaving you. A friend dying, you dying, yeah, like I said, you know, being tortured, having your reputation dragged in the mud, having everything you've worked hard to build, being destroyed. Any kind of obstacle might come your way. And the thing about it is, and this is something that I, um, I feel like I know intuitively, that... It, it's not even going to be something that I plan for. The worst of my obstacles that I have to go through 
uh, the worst ones are the ones that I have not even <laughs> imagined or <laughs> preconceived. You know, it, it, it can be the simplest thing and it can just destroy me. It could just really bring me down to the point that I don't want to do anything anymore. I think you know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, you're, you're probably not going to see it. And that's an element of it. See, a lot of this is I want to kind of, you know, imagine what it might be like and how I might feel and go through the, the motions of it and the emotions of it, right? So that I can... Uh, I, why not? I mean, I, you know, it's like a, it's like an emotion exposure exercise where you are, this is like three E's, emotion exposure exercise, but where you are, uh, you know, you're exposing something that's, that's going to help you. Um, but it, it, it could well, very well be, and very probably I would say be that something would happen in the course of your experience in pursuing your passions that you would face an obstacle that you you never had imagined and in that moment you have the choice you know oh my god i can't do it you know you just think about yourself saying that that's your fear that, that right there is your fear this happened I can't do it anymore that's it that shouldn't exist that belief shouldn't exist but it, it exists it exists in me how many times have I gone to the drawing board and I've walked away because you know some thought some spirit whispered in my ear about how I can't do it and I believed him So why am I sharing all of this with you? I'm not sure. There's there's this little burning feeling that I have that I often feel when I'm coming to the close of my videos where I feel that uh, there's just one more thing that I need to get through to people. But, um... I think maybe I want to share this because God is the most important relationship in our life. And oh yeah, this is what I want. This is it. This I just remembered it. Okay, so it's about loving God, or no, 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 no. It's about believing that or knowing that God is loving. Okay, so this is what it is. All right. So, so this is yeah. This is where I, this is what I wanted to get into. Is that at the core? I started asking the question: Why? Why can I not get motivated? I just can't get motivated. And the answer is, that I found is basically, I don't trust my heavenly parent. I don't trust God. And then I, I ask myself, wait a second. I do happen to believe that there is a God. And I do happen to have had an experience that proves my belief is true. So you might say that it is, no, it is not so much a belief as it is knowledge all right and that experience that i had was receiving some of god's love i've had a few of those experiences um so you would think that <clears throat> having these beautiful you know soul enriching moments you know all to myself and my life would be enough to believe that god is a perfect beautiful being abounding with love God is all love, and there's no anger, rage, treachery, or the hint of betrayal in God. You would think that I believe that. Turns out I don't. And uh, I think it's fascinating. And, and Jesus confirmed this. I was watching a video from Jesus, you know, where I think it was a Divine Truth FAQ video, or FAQ, I should say frequently asked question video um, where Mary was interviewing Jesus and this was more of a side comment it wasn't the main topic of the video but Jesus basically said you know it's a very interesting thing but you can believe that there's a God but you might not 
know whether God is all loving or not. And I was like, oh my God, thank you so much. <laughs> like, like <laughs> that's how I often feel when I listen to Jesus, you know, talk. I'm like, oh yes. <laughs> yes. You just said something that I've, I've been, you know, I've been, I've been locking in a treasure chest in my heart for so long, fearful to expose it to the light because someone might take it away from me. You just <coughs> shown me that there's something to what I've been feeling in my heart. And yeah, so that's how I felt. I felt like God really, um, I don't know, I don't know for, a th for a fact in my heart that God loves me completely. I believe God might be the Wizard of Oz where, I, I think I've said this before, where God is, you know, about to, you know, he's behind a curtain and he's, he's got a lot of uh, great, you know, magic tricks to suggest that he's really something, he's real something. And he'll even, he'll even give you this feeling that, you know, he loves you, which is a beautiful feeling. It, it's like nothing you've ever had. And if I were to think about, you know, if I were to try and go back there in my memory, I mean, it really is beyond words. It truly is beyond words. I can use words like bliss, joy, elation, and all of those words don't even touch it i i have not read about this anywhere i've heard of people speaking to it as far as it being like this it's usually something you can see in someone's eyes or you can hear in someone's tone it's not so much the words they say it's kind of the patience that they have with the idea it's kind of this resolve that people have that, you know, I want to tell you about this religious experience I had, and you you can believe me or not, but I'm telling you that I had it. It's that kind of resolve that tells me something happened to that person. Something really happened to them. That's that's what it is. It's something very, very deep. It it's like I said, it's it's soul enriching. And I realize that it's, it doesn't make logical sense that God would provide this beautiful thing to us, which is, it's just a feeling. It's no more than that. But if you really think about it, if you think about the fact that we lead our lives by feelings, then feelings are more important than you might imagine. If you're on the fence about feelings. But we, we yeah, we lead our lives by feelings. But if God could provide this beautiful soul enriching feeling the soul enriching experience then how can you imagine that God might ever betray you or have anything but love to share well I'm just saying being being as it may you know that being what it is my experience being what, what they have been I still doubt God and I still mistrust God and I feel like that is an, that's an important thing to understand and and that's really what I want to share in this video is you know I think a lot of people go through life a lot of Christians think that they're you know they, they got it all covered because they believe that Jesus is their Savior they already went up they did their prayer and they they gave their life to Christ so to speak and they know that Jesus is their savior. Now they're, they're sharing it with everyone else. And they go to church every Sunday. And the Muslims, you know, they go to mosque. And they pray five times a day. And they've made their pilgrimage to Mecca. You know, and they, they read the Quran. You know, and... and the same for any religion you know you think you might think that you're you've dealt with it but you need to search deeper I don't like how that's coming out I don't want to tell you that you need to search deeper but I want to recommend and this is coming from someone that doesn't have all the answers 
but I I keep on repeating it's it's a rep you know it's a it's I frequently repeat this you know God I'd love to have money I'd love to have my soulmate in my life I'd love to work through my feelings with my parents I'd love to have a job that I love I'd like to know who my soulmate is at the very least I'd love to be not overweight I'd like to be not skinny but I don't want to be flabby I want to have hair on my head I'd like to not have the same physical problems that I have but let me put all of that to the side and ask you for one thing I want to know that you are truly loving and I want to know it in my heart as a truth and I don't want to want to manifest it because I believe it I don't want to do that I don't want to say oh I maybe if I believe it then it will be true no I don't want that shit I want to know in fact that you are truly loving if you are you're all loving there's no betrayal in you. There's nothing, none of that. And I want to know that, so please bring that to me. Oh, Jesus. I'm sorry, I didn't think I'd cry, but that, that feels better than what I was saying before. Which is, you need to search deeper. That felt like another demand. <laughs> I mean, I think it's this beautiful thing. Like, It makes sense. That's why we're not there yet as a human race. You know, The reason why we're so imperfect... The reason why there's so much suffering in, uh, on the planet and in, in, in our existence is because we're not looking at these deep things, man. We're not looking at these very, very, very deep, long-standing issues. And Jesus echoes this sentiment. I mean, I should say that I echo his sentiment, but I'm all, all I'm doing here in my in sharing my life is I'm sharing how I've come to the point where I found these teachings. They are profound. A lot of people around me don't think so. They don't agree that they're profound, that, that they have any bearing on your life or are of any great importance. But I think they're meaningful enough that, you know, gosh darn it, I'm going to try and prove it to myself at the very least. And to me, it's not something that I can prove like in the next few years. I might take 10 years, you know. I feel like 10 years is a good amount of time. If I take 10 years and I really make a, 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 a good go at it, I make a really good effort and I, and I really try and see if any of this stuff is true, that this man who claims to be Jesus, I'm, that's not even proved to me. I call, I call him Jesus. But, I mean, that's just because it makes the most sense. But, you know, if I take 10 years and I try to prove all, all that he's saying without listening to all the people around me who thinks that I'm crazy, that this man who I'm listening to is crazy, you know, stuff all of that and let me just see it for myself. I have self-agency. This is my life. It's not anyone else's life. And I, I don't think you even want, I don't think you want my life. Anyone who says that they want my life... Or that they want to direct everything that happens in my life. You got to be like a, 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 a really big control freak to want that. And I know there are people that want to control others. But if you want to actually control everything in my life. You know I, I don't think you actually want to do that. Because that's a lot of work. To tell me what to do every moment of the day. No. This is my life. This is my experience. And I'm going to uh, gi give it my all. And, and honestly. So far. It makes more sense than it doesn't. It's the most... It, it fits more... It, it answers more questions that I've had than anything else. The Divine Truth teachings have. So that's why I, I listen. And that's why I want to share about my experience. And, you know, I, I often think about, you know, closing my channel. This is a very long video. I ask myself whether someone would want to listen to something so long. <sighs> and and I even question, you know, if I'm not, if I don't have much good to say, why, why am I sharing in the first place? Because I'm definitely not perfect. 
and I keep talking about how I think I might be, and so from the vantage point of, you know, you can see, just like just like what Jesus and Mary and the other people who have returned are doing, you know, you're seeing them in their imperfect state now. But maybe in 5, 10, 20 years, you know, they might be at one with God. And then you'll slowly see them, you know, their physical appearance change and, and you'll see you'll 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 sense a great deal of love exude from them being at one with God. You know, Jesus has said, you know, you'll know it. When I'm at one with God, I don't even have to tell you. You'll you'll know it. <laughs> and that makes sense, you know, to me, based on everything he's been saying. And based on, you know, who he was in the first century. This this monumental figure. You know. I imagine what it's like to have been a fisherman, a fisherman, or whatever, in uh, wherever he was, and um, just seeing him walk. You know, and I'm not trying. <laughs> I'm not. I want to give fuel to the people that worship Jesus. I'm not. That's not what I'm doing. I'm just saying, like, imagine a man full of God's love, in his element. You know, with a sense of himself that no one has ever had who's ever walked the earth, you know. Imagine how attractive that would be. And I don't mean in a sexual way. I just mean, you know, that energy. Imagine how attractive that energy would be. So, yeah. If I could have that, that would be great. Thank you very much. But, uh, yeah, so an hour and six minutes didn't think I'd go so long. I, often, I honestly thought that I'd go like 12 minutes. If I can keep it down to like, tw you know, under 20 minutes, that would be good. It didn't happen, but uh, even though it was a circuitous